Hi guys, we know we live in a crazy time, in the end time, when all speak about peace and safety and suddenly comes destruction, as the Bible says. And they did speak about peace and safety on the Peace and Security Summit in Warsaw last month. Friends, we know the Kingdom of Heaven is at hand. The Lord is coming back very soon. We don't have much time left. And how close we are to the return of Christ can be seen from the signs in the sky that Jesus mentioned when he was asked by his disciples what will be the signs of his return. And he said, there shall be signs in the sun and moon and stars, and the powers of the sky shall be shaken. Exactly this is happening currently in the sky, but it is happening hidden behind a veil pushed up by the enemy. The whale consists of heavy chemical pollution in the air and a projector system simulating the sun and the moon in periods of eclipses when they are covered by the huge celestial objects in our sky. The planetary system present in our sky is hidden, but they cannot hide anything by simulating parts of the sky using this projector technology. I am showing to you here images from weather camps located in Alaska and Canada. The images show the huge celestial objects in our sky. These images are from a video from the channel The Final Days. You may find the link to the video from The Final Days in the upper corner. In the, view. the rotation of this large object can be seen. Eventually, both orbs fade into the atmospheric chemicals and out of sight. The south-facing camera in Seward, Alaska shows that same fast rotating red heavily cratered orb that we've seen many times rolling across the sky. For several reasons we know this can't be a lens flare. One, it's rotating much faster than our sun rotates. And two, in the last frames the clouds move in front of this object. Clouds can never be on top of a camera produced lens flare. The south-facing camera in Wainwright, Alaska shows something large and round just under the sun near the top of the screen. We know this can't be a lens flare because the glare is reaching to this object, reaching downward toward it as NASA's manufactured light moves to the right. But there is so much deception in the world. People are sleeping like in the movie The Matrix. If they knew what is going on, they would freak out. But they don't know because they haven't received the red pill. So how can they receive the red pill? Guys, there is another world behind the visible world. And the high degree of deception is because the spirit of truth is not effective in them. The Spirit of Truth is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, who guides us into all truths. For He does not speak from Himself, but He speaks whatsoever the Father in Heaven speaks. And He announces to us what is coming. And what is coming is the Kingdom of Heaven. The Lord Jesus Christ, who is coming back to judge the living and the dead. Friends, many people cannot see the truth, because they live in the world in their carnal desires, in sin. And the spirit of truth is the spirit whom the world does not know. But the believers in Christ know him, for the spirit abides with them and shall be in them. So to the Christians recall no fornicators, no homosexuals, no liars, no cheaters, no bouncers, no drunkards, no thieves will inherit the kingdom of heaven. So if you live in your fleshly desires, you are not saved. Don't be deceived. There is no one time saved, forever saved. This is a lie, a misbelief. The Apostle Paul made it completely clear. When we continue sinning willfully after accepting Christ as our Lord and Savior, there is no sacrifice left anymore for our sins, but only the waiting for the terrible judgment. Because you would trample on the precious blood of Jesus and mock him so. But if you haven't yet recognized the truth of this world, you need to swallow the red pill that will open your eyes.
The truth is only in Jesus. He will guide you into all truths. When you accept him as your Lord and Savior, confess your sins to the Holy Father and turn away from all sins. We can also recognize the truth of the invisible world from the visible things that we can see. The evidence for God's existence has never been greater than today. It is originating from many fields of science. But this evidence is hidden behind a veil of irritation, since there is a distortion of the modern scientific findings in society. What you haven't been told on TV and in school is that modern science has already disproven evolution. It is proven that the species already existed from the beginning and could not have evolved. It has been shown beyond question that evolution is impossible as it stands against natural laws. Against the law of entropy, the law of conservation of mass and energy, the laws of information, the laws of heredity and the laws of statistics. And this means that there is a definite creator who has intelligently designed this world. The problem with atheism is only that it is based on a lack of knowledge and misinformation. A lack of knowledge regarding the modern scientific findings and misinformation because of the disregard of these findings by mass media and mainstream science. I don't want to do a science lecture here, but I have a flyer summarizing some of the evidence that shows why intelligent design is correct and evolution is not. So if you are still living in the matrix, then this may be your red pill. But similar to the movie, if you love the world more than the truth, which means if you love your sins and don't want to come out of them, then you may just ignore it and swallow the blue pill and you will be right back in fantasy land again. But you have been warned, the end of this path is destruction, everlasting death, for many walk on the broad path that leads to destruction, but only few find the narrow path that leads to everlasting life. I have stored the flyer online and put the link in the description box. Just a short hint for those who struggle to believe that this is true. Look for example at the findings from genetics, showing that the complexity of information in any cell and any DNA molecule rules out evolution by the laws of statistics. The probability that this information comes about by accident and evolution can be illustrated by an example. Throw scrabble pieces randomly on a disk. How likely is it that they form a very simple sentence like to be or not to be by accident? It is zero. You can do that one million times and it never happens. And we need to recognize that this information is only Z pertaining to the physical body. But what about the information forming thoughts, will, consciousness, mind, feelings? Where do they come from? They come from the mental, the spiritual realm. They cannot come from the flesh at all, which has been proven scientifically. And furthermore, there are numerous mechanisms in the body that require the non-reduced form. That is, these biological mechanisms must have come into existence completely from the beginning and could not have evolved. And there are many of such irreducible complexities apart from the flagellum motor which is a prominent example, such as gene transcription processes, protein synthesis, blood clotting and many more. And finally, just take a look at the probability that one single protein, of which we have 28 thousands in the body, is formed by accident. It has been calculated and it is 1 to 10 to the power of 160, which is zero. Notice that the number of all atoms in the universe is only 10 to the power of 80. In view of the overwhelming evidence for the existence of God, I can only urge you, repent and prepare yourself for your encounter with God. Don't be deceived. God created all men and he wants us to come back to him. But unfortunately, some choose not to return to him and they do so from their own will but in the absence of knowledge about creation. And this is a fatal misconception. The reason that not all return to God is that God has given man free will. So you can decide on yourself whether you come to God or stay away from him. But God has made many offers to us. 
through scriptures he has spoken to us, and even through creation itself he has spoken to us, as we know today and as science has clearly shown. For the invisible things of him are clearly seen from the creation of the world, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. God always reached out his hand towards us, even though we didn't thank him for all he has done for us, and even though we turned away from him and sinned against him and the kingdom of heaven. He never refused us, but even sent us his only begotten and beloved Son, Jesus Christ, so that we can be saved through him, through his holy innocent sacrifice. He made it very simple to us to be saved. The only thing we need to do is to believe in him and his work of salvation. For so much loved God the people that he gave his only begotten son. But they rejected him as well because they didn't recognize him, even until today. And that's the reason why the Bible speaks about reprobates, those who are not dedicated to the kingdom of heaven. Do you want to be a reprobate? But that's a free will. The free will enables a person to help or steal sick people. Even though the evidence of creation is striking and more than obvious, many people don't want to see it and thus they remove themselves by their own will. God cannot and does not want to change this for the sake of free will, since he wants them to come to him from their own decision and not by force. Those who accept Jesus and confess that he is the Son of God who came into our world to pay the price for our sins will be saved, but those who reject him will be lost, for him is given the power to separate the sheep from the goats, the wheat from the chaff. The shovel is in his hand, and he will gather the wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. It is therefore important to decide quickly and accept God's generous offer, as the hour of judgment is at hand. If you don't accept Jesus, you cannot be saved from everlasting hellfire. For human life is only a transitory moment, and the return of the Son of Man is imminent. Therefore we must be prepared, so that it won't strike us unprepared, for as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man. For as the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noe entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away, so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man. The hour comes quickly, and no one knows when it will be. Therefore you should be prepared, and praise the name of the Lord, because neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. No one comes to the Father except through him. Therefore let no further time go by. It may have been the last time you let go. Access to heaven is still open, but may soon be locked. Hurry up! Confess your sins to the Holy Father. Ask for forgiveness in the name of Jesus Christ. Repent and take your cross upon you. Turn away from all carnal and material desires, and purify your heart and thoughts from all anger and rage, hate and envy, pride and presumption, vanity and arrogance, bigotry and hard-heartedness, micrology and unforgiving, greed and avarice, falsehood and deceit, lust and passion, and blasphemy and pomposity and mockery, for these are the works of darkness, have no fellowship with the works of darkness. Don't be deceived, these are not the works of God. None of them comes from God. It is the nature of man and the power of darkness. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against demons of darkness that haunt people, dwell in them, capture their hearts and souls, and corrupt them, as the Apostle Paul said. For we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, 
against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. God wants to save people from darkness and from the powers of darkness that are very active in this world. And that's why Jesus said to us, And I shall deliver you from the people and the Gentiles unto whom I sent you, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them, which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Don't be deceived. God has given man a soul and he wants us to strive for holiness, to get prepared for the fellowship with him in heaven. Therefore break away from the works of darkness and go into the light where darkness has no power. Go under the protection of the Lord Jesus Christ so that you will be children of light, children of God. So confess yourself to God now. Wait no longer. Seek God, for he is waiting for you and he cares for you. He wants you to pray to him. Remember his words. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you.